From the day I got my first gig on cybersecurity, it took me 10 years to establish my business and get into the top 1%. It took three years for my first high paying client. And after that, like a whole year to get into startups and a couple more years for me to get like called into like really high paying opportunities. You can say I lost a lot of time because I followed the traditional path to computer science which basically was you got to study, you got to get into computer science, a faculty, a university, and like, just go with the flow. After I started to get some gigs, I started to like really get lots of messages for like full-time opportunities. The best thing about that is that I refused all of them. I had my mind on my own business, so I just refused everything I got. The main question you might be asking right now is that, is there a faster way to like get into software engineering or cybersecurity or any of these? 100%. Of course, and I'll show you the three biggest mistakes you can do right now and how to get a high paying job from three to six months only with this video. Lots of times I do the same question to myself. If I could go back in time, what would I change differently? Well, you can say I've lost like countless hours learning about georetical algorithms, learning about like small details, learning about algorithms that I may never use on my day-to-day -day job, or maybe even cryptography-like stuff, but I've never used them. There's lots of stuff that I've learned, I've studied, I've spent countless hours on, which to this day I haven't used even on my business or even on my gigs with my clients. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Well, basically this video removes all the fluff, where this video removes all the like long format things, and I'll tell you the fastest way that you can do right now in order for you to get a high paying job in three to six months. Throughout this video, I'll share with you some of the biggest mistakes all the beginners do. Uh, I did those myself. Uh, it's not something that like uh, you know from the beginning, but these are lessons that you will learn the hard way or if you listen to me the easy way. So first things first, if you want to get into the software development world or even on cybersecurity, the first thing you need to learn is you got to pick a programming language. You, you shouldn't go with the hard ones. You shouldn't go with the ones uh, who have a hard syntax. You should go with the ones who feel like uh, like English language, who have those keywords, who are easier to pick up, who have lots of pre-made stuff. So basically, if I were to tell you to like pick up a programming language, the first one would be Python. I started with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but we cannot call those programming languages, you know what I mean? Because uh, these are too easy. Uh, if you're going to learn HTML, if you're going to learn a CSS, like it has head tags, it has body tags, it has footer tags. It's it's pretty simple actually. If you know one thing or two things about the computer, you can pick up HTML and CSS together within a week. You can learn that because it's one of the easiest things on computer science. But if you want to pick a programming language that uh, has some like object-oriented like technique to it. Let's say you have inheritance, you have polymorphism, uh, you have also these all these other stuff that you need to learn. I would go with Python. Why Python? It's one of the best programming languages out there. And it's not just that it's easy, but if you're going into Java, if you're going like onto C, into Ruby and Rails, let's say like something entirely different, uh, it will be much harder for you to like pick up the steps if you're going to learn this R all by yourself. Uh, with Python, it's a little bit different. Why is it different? Because Python has these things called libraries. It means that previously, people have been working on different programs, on diff uh, different pieces of code. And for example, if you need to have a function, you have a library for it. Uh, we, we can say the same for C Sharp or like uh, C++ or even Java. Uh, Java and JavaScript, they're not the same thing. I think you'll learn it like later on. Uh, but what I want to say is that you have pre-made stuff, you have these templates, you have these blueprints on Python that are easier to use, easier to learn, and you can start building your own application right now with Python, even though you have zero experience. I'm not saying you're going to be a programmer, like a senior, a perfect programmer on Python or developer, however you want to call it, in a one month. It will take you like two or three months to get like used to it. You can start writing your own code because most of the developers in the beginning, when you first start this like big journey, what people do is they start getting like pre-made pieces of code. They start copy and pasting and saying, oh, this works. Uh, I did this, I did that by not doing anything at all because they haven't learned the logic, they haven't learned the syntax, they haven't learned anything from Python. They've only copied and pasted the code 
and they think it's working. But the idea is learning, like development in in general, is not like that. You got to learn how everything works. Why I'm saying Python is that if you're going with Java, you have to like write lots of stuff in order to get to the only to the hello world. Like just print a string as simple as hello world. You're going to write、uh, a couple pieces of code. But with Python, it's different. You got to do just a print. Print, open parentheses, type, type, hello world in the middle, and you run it. And that's it. Nothing else. That's why I love Python the most. And the resources online, like、uh, you have lots of them. You have paid resources, free resources. We're going to talk about those as well.、Uh, should you pay or should you not? What I'm saying, go with Python. Is that、uh, you got to understand that you're in this for the long haul. You're not in this just to, like apply for a job and get a job. I'm not saying be perfect at it because you will have time. You will have your own career to keep going to get like perfect on Python.、Uh, but what I'm saying is like coding, programming, development, however you want to call it, it shouldn't be like boring. You should have really lots of fun doing it. Like it should be something that interests you, and you like it. You you can have it as a passion. We can say, but you're on it for a long haul. If you're not on it from that, like、uh, maybe in the in the end, like if you're in it just for the money, it pays good money. But if you're in it just for the money and it sounds boring and you don't like it, I would literally suggest you, like pick up digital marketing, pick up graphic design, pick up something else because programming will may or may not be for you. Now that we agree that Python is the main programming language you should start learning, we gotta understand how to learn it. I mentioned earlier we have free courses, we have paid courses. You also have like multiple, maybe thousands, probably videos on YouTube with like millions of views that tell you from the beginning to the end, from zero to hero, from beginner to professional. Like you have all these kinds of videos only for for Python that teach you how to be really good at it. They're like free YouTube courses. There's also lots of websites that are offering like、uh, you got you can enroll them right now. Where you can learn Python from the beginning, not to the end, but you can get some pretty strong fundamentals there. And a lot of people don't understand this.、Uh, what a lot of people do, they go onto these websites like Udemy and all these other stuff. Like they pay like five dollar course and they download it, they never look at it again, and that's bad as well. What they do is they just go see which course has the highest sales, which course has have been has been watched the most. And maybe these courses may not be good at all. They're good only for like some beginners. Some people may just download them because of the hype, and that is not the way you should go about it. Like personally, what I would consider is that you got to understand what you're looking for. If you go just to the like most clicked course, maybe that course is not suited for you.、Uh, over time, in fact, for this video, I've done lots of research, and there are lots of companies that that offer this. They offer these courses. But what I've understood from my students, because I told you I'm a professor in two different universities, is that if you're not paying like a good chunk of money, let's say, for something, you will never be that eager to like listen to it or like look at it. I know probably dozens of people, like、uh, friends and family, who have bought like really cheap stuff, like five dollar courses,、uh, ten dollar courses, like on discount, and they have never looked at them anymore. Like literally, never, ever, ever. Even though they bought them like a year ago. So one of the best websites,、uh, probably the best one that I've stumbled upon, like I think around a month ago, is CourseCareers.com. Basically, what that website, in fact, we can call it even a platform. What the platform is, it's a platform that tells you, hey, you want to learn this, you want to learn this, you want to learn this. We're going to tell you what you need to learn,、uh, what kind of job you're looking for. You'll tell them what what you're looking for. They'll give you the course, and basically, when they give you the course, they enroll you on this like free trial where you don't have to pay literally anything, and you can like learn like the basic stuff, see if it's for you, and after that, you can pay for the full course. But this is something I didn't have on my time. If I had it around my time, I would test different stuff out, see what I would be good at, and then just go with it. Like pay the full thing. You can be a developer, you can be a programmer without finishing the university. University will help you unlock like much different doors, but the door that maybe it won't help you solely would be like getting a job. We can say that pretty easily.、Uh, I'm pretty sure every one of you watching, you probably know lots of developers who haven't finished their university. They don't have a bachelor's degree, they don't have a master's degree, but they have a really good, high-paying job. 
And this makes us understand that the whole education system has shifted rapidly. So we have all these alternatives now that if you want to get a job, uh, three months to six months, you go to coursecareers.com, you go to these other websites, you finish the course, you like study a lot about it, and then you get the job. It's easy as that. When you're looking for a course, there are some small things you should look into before you choose it. So the first one would be the lectures. Uh, are they in your own language? Are they easy to understand? Is the audio good? So basically, are they in your own language? You understand that one. I don't need to explain that to you. Uh, is the audio good? If it's a bad audio, you won't be able to listen it to like a couple hours. You will listen to it for like 10 minutes, but not for more. And the other thing would be that, is the value inside really good? One of the main things would be hands-on exercises. You can learn everything on theory, but the only way you'll truly learn about something is if you do it in practice. So basically, you can learn about how Python works, how to write like Hello World, uh, why is Hello World good for, why is Python installing it on your computer good for. But if you're not doing it yourself, you're, you have probably not learned anything. So basically, all that money that you put into the course, you like already burned it. Theory without practice in uh, programming, on cybersecurity, and development at all, like on every field of computer science, is equal to zero. You gotta understand that from the beginning. Everything you learn, you put it onto practice and you find the course that has the hands-on exercises. If a course offers you hands-on exercises, you will be like forced to finish all those. After you've chosen the course, after you've had like your two months of work, it is time to start preparing for like getting a job. You should start applying for interviews. Uh, a long time ago, like probably five, five years ago, uh, I was in a coffee with a friend and uh, he was saying, hey, um, I've sent these all these like CVs, I've sent these applications, but no one is calling me for a job. Like, I don't know what to do, I'll be jobless. And I told him like, hey, um, how many did you send? Like, actually? And he said, well, I sent two. But no, it's not enough. If you haven't sent like 50 different applications, 50 different companies, you shouldn't even mention that you've been applying to get a job. Uh, what you should do right now, you should understand if you've started to like garner some skills, on the whole like development, uh, security or blah, 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 in all of these fields, you should start scheduling two to three interviews a week. What this will help you with is that if you've never been in an interview before, the first time you go, you will have all these emotions bottled up in it within you and no one will reassure you that everything will go well. You, you cannot reassure yourself as well because you know you don't have like the expertise, you know you don't have the experience and what the idea is, is that you gotta get the experience one way or another. Like, you gotta go into this job interview the first time it will be bad, the second time it will be bad, third time you'll get better, the fourth time you'll be really good at it, and over time you will master also the job interviews. The last message I wanna tell you today is that you should be really motivated about this. But what a lot of young people don't understand is that the market is looking actively for new employees. Like, Every company needs some really good developers. If you're just a basic developer, you have a place. If you're a good developer, you have a place. If you're a really, really good developer, you also have a place. Like, new applications are being built every day. Meta, Instagram, all of these startups, in, in, the, in their time they were startups, now they're like multi-billion dollar companies. Everyone's looking for new developers. Python, C Sharp, Java like even gaming companies, they need good developers. So the market has never been better for you. If you're on the development path and you only know one programming language, you're set up to fail. Technology is like different every day. Technology is emerging, technology is updating, upgrading. And if you're stuck with only one programming language, that's the biggest mistake you can do in your life. So basically what you do is start getting into like other programming languages, start learning new stuff, start learning new technologies because that will make sure you're on the right path. And even if someday, let's say C Sharp is the only one you know, if you're stuck only with that and that stops, if you've mastered that and you've also like over time been interested in different stuff, it won't be so hard for you to migrate from one technology to another. So that was all for today. If you're a beginner, if you don't have a course, uh, you can go to coursecareers.com. It's one of the best platforms I recommend. You can get the link in my description. You can go sign up for it. Find which courses you like and apply immediately. If you're like experienced, if you've started learning like Python, C Sharp, or literally anything like that, make sure to create a CV and like send it over to all the companies you know. 
And as always, this is AG with a new setup signing off.